can i share my slides yes sir i hope my slides are visible and and i am audible yes sir that's great that's great thank you thank you to persons and uh, at the onset i'll like to thank dr chavla for inviting me to this interesting international symposium on diabetes and today i will be talking about something to make more symmetrical and especially about symmetry means the symmetry about the blood glucose control whenever we see a patient of diabetes and uh, we know that with the all the guidelines maybe the ada guidelines or the esd guidelines everybody talks about uh, the insulin and especially the basal insulin which is uh, the add on after metformin so you can have so many things now there is so much buzz about agil2 inhibitor glb1 rhs which we have heard of but still basal insulin still remain the bread and butter of the glycemic control but there is lot of heterogeneity in the basal insulin and that i'll be covering in in my presentation so i'll be just telling you there were so many unmet needs with uh, whatever insulin that we were using earlier especially the basal insulin because we have seen even in our clinical practice there are a lot of patients who have hypoglycemias and it's actually not truly once daily so it has kind of a peaking effect uh, and then which is associated with nighttime hypoglycemia and there is significant variability in the in this insulin because of again it's not actually peakless kind of insulin so it has a peak layer which is responsible for its variability and therefore most of the time these insulins are to be prescribed at a fixed time in a day but with this lifestyle what we are having presently can we have more flexibility in this regimen of insulin to our patients and whenever we talk about insulin the very important factor which comes is the hypoglycemias so high nocturnal hypoglycemias which we have all seen with the basal insulin once we inject it at maybe the bed time Uh, this is a real concern in uh, quite a significant number of patients so these are few unmet needs and if we can probably tide over this uh, all these challenges with something new basal insulin then it will be a good thing so now we have been using now degludec for quite a couple of years or even more than that so we should be knowing actually what exactly in insulin degludec so i'll be talking about this uh, the unique uh, action and mode of protraction of the insulin which is responsible for its quite longer action as compared to the pre existing basal insulin and more important is the predictability so once we inject the insulin we know that how much hours it is going to work how does it actually does it so what happens is whenever we inject this degludec it is in dihexamer formation in the pen that we use it and it is with phenol so once it is injected what happens is this rapid phenol depletion uh, after the injection is given it leads to formation of long chains and all these chains are form of lot of hexamers so this multiple hexamer chain formation is there and the zinc diffuses slowly which cause only the slowly slowly this hexamers are released from this long chain which deassemble and then it leads to formation of first dimers and then monomers and we know that it is the monomeric form of the insulin which is responsible for binding to the insulin receptors and having its action so this is again same with regular insulin it is again a monomeric insulin but with this degludec we have made it more protracted more slow release and this is because of the presence of phenol presence of zinc and some modification in the insulin molecule per se therefore it is slowly released and has long duration of action so if i compare degludec with the pre existing basal insulin which is the standard that is glargin u100 insulin we see that the onset of action is almost around half hour to one hour earlier as compared to glargin u100 we see with glargin u100 is 2 to 4 hours but but with degludec it is around 0.5 to 1.5 hours interestingly it said that both of them has almost peak this kind of thing but what is more important is that degludec again because of this dihexamer and multihexamer chain formation it has a very long duration of action of more than 42 hours as compared to glargin u100 which has a action of 20 to 24 hours 
So Degrodec has a faster onset of action and prolonged duration of action as compared to Glargin Q100. There have been many studies where they have compared this insulin Degrodec with the Glargin 100 also and Glargin 300 also. Now, this is a comparison in the Bright study where they have compared the insulin Degrodec with Glargin 300. And they found out that there was a better fasting plasma glucose control with Degrodec as compared to U300 insulin. And there was a difference of around 7 milligram per deciliter, and which was uh, found to have a significant difference. So we can have a better fasting glucose control with Degrodec. Moreover, Degrodec also provide a greater reduction in A1C as compared to even U300 insulin. And most of these patients were followed and uh, followed for a period of six months. So there was around 1.5% further reduction in the HbA1c with Degludec as compared to large in U300. And this expected treatment difference was 0.3. And it was quite significant, you can see from this P. So this confidence interval ranges from 0.51 to 0.03, and it was quite significant, suggesting that Degludec was more effective as compared to large in U300, both for fasting as well as HP1C reduction. Now, saying that, that it is more effective in reducing fasting as well as HP1C, and what I showed in the first slide is that these basal insulins are associated with more variability in day-to-day -day as, as well as within day. So this is the study where they compared Degludec, uh, which is published just around uh, three, four years back in general of diabetes, where they compared Degludec with Glargin U100. And now you can see this is a beautiful study where they plotted the area under curve of the glucose infusion rate and what they found out when Degrodec was injected in a dose of 0.4 unit per kg and glargin was also injected in the individuals with 0.4 unit per kg the GIR was almost constant you can see the injection was given here and the patient were followed from first 6 hours the next 6 hours then 12 to 18 and 18 to 24 so over a period of 24 hours it is such a smooth glucose infusion rate that is required to maintain a persistent or a uh, level of glucose that they have uh, sought or plotted. As compared to, you can see, this glucose infusion rate is quite variable and it is decreasing in with this glargin 200. First thing, probably, this Degrodec is associated with better around the clock coverage as compared to glargin 200. And this is again another study. Uh, this is a little bit old study, but also you can see these blue bars are with insulin Degludec and green bars are with glargin U100. Again, this is the coefficient of variation or the day-to-day -day variability in the glucose levels and this area under curve with glucose infusion rate. Again, you can beautifully see that this GIR was almost constant for a whole day and they have just plotted every two hours as compared to insulin glargin U100. The glucose infusion rate initially peaked and then decreased. So a lot of variability is there in the action of the insulin and that sometimes might be deleterious for the patient. And we know that this glucose variability has been plotted for and has been implicated for the macrovascular complications in patients with diabetes. Regarding the Glucose variability, again, related to the TBR, that is the time below range. So this is a study that mainly studied about the hypoglycemia level, whether it is nocturnal level 2, level 1, or level 1 plus 2. And we can see that in these patients who were in, injected with insulin Degludec, what they found out is overall there was around 20 minutes per day less time which was spent in the hypoglycemia as compared to insulin glargin Q100. And that is a significant amount because we know that even a single minute in hypoglycemia would have a significant implications and also contribute to marked increase in the glycemic variability. So this is a positive point with insulin degludec as compared to glargin Q100. This slide shows target in range, which was better with Degrodec 200, you can see, and this was around uh, quite significant, around 3% difference between the two groups. Same, the A1C was better controlled, and there was around 0.9% reduction with Degrodec as compared to Glargin U300. Again, it was found to be significant, and time above range was less, and there was the difference was 
around 3%. So time above range is also less. So overall, if I calculate this percentage into the minutes spent in 24 hours, you would see that time in range was 44 minutes more with insulin Deglodec as compared to insulin U300. And the time above range was 44 minutes less with Deglodec compared to Glargin 300 with a lower HV1C. That is a significant advantage. This is again a CGMS chart that shows the significant lower glycemic variability with Deglodec. So intervention, this was the chart. You can see there were the peaks in the insulin. There was again a peak that was present in these patients, peak glucose. And once the insulin Deglodec was injected, there was most most of the time it was kind of a peakless kind of glucose and it was almost in the range. So overall, the coefficient of variation was significantly reduced by injecting Deglodec and the glycemic variability was also reduced. So most of the time when we treat our patients, we sometimes are so much in, engaged in only the fasting PP and the HV1C, but you forget to take account into the glycemic variability and that can be challenged by changing or switching our patient from the conventional basal insulin to Deglodec. Now moving on to the another part of uh, my presentation that is pertinent because hypoglycemia is a real risk whether it may be any insulin uh, even the basal I mean the in basal insulin analogs also they are associated with hypoglycemia but we need to compare as compared to the glargin U100. And we have evidences from large phase 3A studies, phase 3B studied, the, even the CBO2 trial, which have also studied the hypoglycemia because that was always one of the secondary endpoint of these uh, trials. In the begin trial, they found out that almost 49% reduction in the incidences of nocturnal hypoglycemia and 86% reduction in severe hypoglycemia was seen as compared to glargin U100. Same was seen in switch 2, which was a phase 3b study where they found around 46% reduction in the severe hypoglycemia episodes. And devote view on known that was a CVO2 trial with this insulin Deglodec, uh, where they compared with the large U100. And again, there was around 53% reduction in the nocturnal hypoglycemia in these trials. So there is significant evidence that if the patient is on uh, this Deglodec insulin, the chance of hypoglycemia is less. If I just put this statistics into a different way, is the number need to treat, and that is important. So to avoid one hypoglycemia, you will need to treat just one patient for one year for oral hypoglycemia and 21 patients for one year to avoid severe hypoglycemia. And that was in, if you see in type 1 diabetes patient, you need to treat one patient for four months to avoid uh, oral hypoglycemia and three patients for one year. And that is a significant number. That is a good number. And the money to treat is much less as compared to the other insulins. So I put it in another way now, that is the amount of hypoglycemia that a patient would experience per a1c reduction so you can see on the x-axis is the hv1c reduction in percentage points and on the y-axis is the increase in symptomatic hypoglycemia we know that whenever we treat our patient aggressively whenever our aim is to achieve the a1c of around seven percent yes the patient is bound and patient is going to have hypoglycemia but with which insulin you can have lesser incidence of hypoglycemia that is very pertinent so with once the patient has more HV1C reduction, the hypoglycemia is increasing. But what is the difference is, this blue line is with Deglodec and this greenish line is with Glargin U100. So there was overall around 22% increase incidence of hypoglycemia with around 0.7% reduction in HV1C with Glargin U100 as compared to insulin Deglodec. So this is, again, we can very safely counsel our patients that when we are achieving our targets, probably insulin Deglodec might be a safer insulin as compared to insulin U100. This is in the maintenance period and the total treatment period in this uh, study that is recently published in Diabetologia. So overall, either it may be the sim overall symptomatic hypoglycemia, which was less, you can see around 21% reduced risk of overall symptomatic hypoglycemia, 35% reduction in the nocturnal symptomatic hypoglycemia. And what is more important is the severe hypoglycemia, which we all endocrinologists and physicians fear which requires hospitalization also was significantly reduced by around 81% by using Deglodec in this conclude study. So this is an important outcome 
measure in this. So change in the rate of hypoglycemia demonstrates overall a 30% lower rate of hypoglycemia with Deglodec versus U300. And there was significantly lower incidence of more than one episode of hypoglycemia with the odds of 0.64, which was found to be significant in favor of Deglodec. Once we are using uh, this insulin and we know that now Deglodec is associated with lower incidence of hypoglycemia and the significant concern is the weight gain. And further, we believe that larger is the dose of the insulin, more is the weight gain. So to achieve a particular HV1C, what is the difference in the dose with the Deglodec as compared to Glargin 300? And this is uh, detailed from this bright study where they beautifully plotted the insulin dose and then the patient what followed up to the week 24, six months. And they found out that there was 23% lower dose required to achieve a fixed HA1C reduction as compared to Glargin U300. And that will save the cost. It will also reduce the episodes of hypoglycemia and also reduce the weight gain. So lower dose, lower dose means lesser SMBG monitoring also is required. So in this study, they found out there was 10% lower dose with Deglodec versus in Glargin U100 and overall 23% lower dose with Deglodec versus the Glargin U300. So in this uh, beautiful study, uh, which was published in Diabetes Care, they found out that almost two strips less were required per week with Deglodec. And we know that strips really cost to a patient, especially to a patient of type 1 diabetes, where it adds to the treatment of diabetes. Moreover, once we are seeing less of hypoglycemias and lesser dose, which will also decrease the cost of the treatment, probably that might be some of the reasons that contributed to better adherence in patients with Deglodec. So the likelihood of discontinuation of insulin once we put our patients on Deglodec is less as compared to Glargin 300 and that was 27% less. And I believe that this might also, in addition to this uh, reduced dose and the cost, it might also be because of the reduced incidence of hypoglycemias in these patients which contribute to better adherence. And another factor for better adherence might be the flexibility of dosing that I'll be detailing. So if you look about flexibility, for basal insulin, especially the conventional basal insulin, we ask our patient to inject at a particular fixed time of the day. If you look at our prescriptions, we write just insulin basal glargin at uh, 10 p.m. or just before bedtime. So usually the time is fixed, but sometimes, uh, or I would say most of the time, many of the patients have very such a busy schedule and it might be very difficult to take insulin at a particular time. So we need more flexibility and more flexibility you could achieve with the insulin which have a longer duration of action like Deglodec. So there is a lot of flexibility with insulin Deglodec. You can inject this insulin from a wide window period of 8 to 40 hours. So if a patient has forgotten at 24 hours, suppose he's injecting at 9 p.m. and he forgets to take because he is probably going to marriage function or he's busy somewhere. So he might take even in the uh, next morning also that would roughly around 36 hours before the um, first dose or the prior dose that will not lead to significant hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia because it's a prolonged on protracted action as compared to glargin 300 which has to be administered within plus minus three hours so we have a better flexibility with deglutec also and this is the last slide which talks about the devote uh, the data and that was related to major adverse CV events. And this is again, um, because we talk so much about the CVOT trials with HCL2 inhibitors, GP1Rs and GPP4s. So why not with insulin? Because they are also known and they are given in patients with diabetes. And this study showed that overall, the incidence uh, of the CV or the MACE events was neutral or found to be non-inferior. So in in, if we talk about the very high, those patients who had a very high risk of the maze events, the incidence was significantly less. You can see the confidence interval was 0.76 and CI of 0.58 to 0.9. So De Degladab overall had a significant lower risk of maze versus insulin glargin U100 in patients who are at very high risk of severe hypoglycemia. So I would conclude by saying that insulin Degladab is a newer insulin. Though we have now experience of around three to four years, 
with insulin degludec it is kind of a faster onset of action within just uh, half an hour to one uh, one and a half hours as compared to maybe two to four hours with the conventional basal insulin and more protracted action that is responsible for more flexibility and also responsible for very less day to day variability as also been demonstrated by many of these uh, pharmacokinetic and pharmacodynamic studies regarding hypoglycemias whether it may be the nocturnal hypoglycemias the oral hypoglycemia symptomatic as well as severe hypoglycemia it is significantly less with the insulin degludec compared to glargin and flexibility i always say to our patients that uh, just don't put a burden on your mind that you have to inject insulin every time on the fixed time of the day so probably this insulin is better regarding the flexibility so thank you thanks